everyone talks about NVIDIA, but almost everyone looks at it the wrong way. It's not about forecasts. What if NVIDIA is not just winning the AI race, but quietly shaping the entire structure of the AI industry itself? Real power doesn't come from performance. It comes from positioning. In this episode, we analyze NVIDIA like strategists do. Using Michael Porter's five forces, we'll break down how control is built and why it matters far beyond this stock. By the end, you won't see NVIDIA as a product company anymore, but as a structural force inside the AI economy. One quick thing before we start, if you want to follow our work consistently, please click the notification bell. It really matters for the channel. Let's begin. Chapter 1. The Framework To analyze NVIDIA properly, we need a framework, and one of the most powerful tools ever built comes from Michael Porter. Porter's framework is often misunderstood. It's not about forecasting earnings. It's not about valuation multiples. It's about industry structure. Porter asks a simple question. How much economic value can a company sustainably capture? To answer this, he defined five forces that shape every industry, First, the threat of new entrants. How easy is it to enter? Second, the bargaining power of suppliers. Who controls critical inputs? Third, the bargaining power of buyers. Who sets the terms? Fourth, the threat of substitutes. What can replace the product? And finally, rivalry among existing competitors. Together, these forces determine whether profits are temporary or structurally durable. Porter's framework shows where power truly sits, not who is loudest, not who grows the fastest, but who controls the structure. This is the lens we now apply to NVIDIA. Chapter 2. The Threat of New Entrance Let's look at the structure. The AI industry is not what it seems. At first glance, it looks like software. But economically, it isn't. AI is not a low-cost industry. It is an industry of rising costs. Every new generation requires more data, more compute, more energy, more infrastructure. This is not classic software. In traditional software, scale reduces marginal cost. In AI, scale often raises total system costs. Training frontier models cost hundreds of millions of dollars. An inference, running models every day, is also expensive. Compute doesn't disappear after training. It becomes a permanent operating cost. Key insight, AI is not a race to the cheapest model. It's a race to control the infrastructure that makes intelligence possible. So the barrier to entry is no longer talent. It is capital. CUDA, the real mode. At first glance, AI looks accessible. Models are open source. Code is everywhere. But competition begins much deeper. NVIDIA's true moat is not silicon, it is software. CUDA, Compute Unified Device Architecture, a platform that allows GPUs to be used for general computation. Over time, CUDA became an ecosystem. Libraries, compilers, toolkits, frameworks, entire workflows built around it. Millions of developers trained on it, years of optimization embedded inside. Switching costs that are not financial, but cognitive, organizational and operational. A competitor can design a chip, but rebuilding an ecosystem takes a decade. That's why barriers to entry in AI are not just high. They are cumulative. The inference signal. Very recently, in early 2025, another signal appeared. NVIDIA moved closer to teams and technologies focused on high-performance inference, including companies like Grok, known for ultra-low latency architectures. This was not a public acquisition, but a strategic alignment through partnerships, ecosystem signals, and capital exposure. And that distinction matters. Inference is where value is created. It's where models run at scale, where latency, efficiency, and cost per query decide winners. Training gets attention. Inference generates cash flow. By engaging early with inference-focused architectures, NVIDIA isn't chasing competitors. It's absorbing signals from the frontier. This is classic Porter logic. Neutralize potential disruption before it becomes structural competition. It's not about owning every company. It's about shaping the battlefield before others can. Chapter 3. Bargaining Power of Suppliers To understand NVIDIA's true position, we need to step back from the stock and look at the structure of the industry itself. Because in technology, power does not come from products alone. It comes from structure. 
who controls the critical layers, who depends on whom, and where the real bottlenecks are. This is where Michael Porter's framework becomes essential, and this is where one name becomes unavoidable, TSMC. TSMC stands for Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. It is the world's most advanced semiconductor foundry. Unlike NVIDIA, Apple or AMD, TSMC does not design chips, it manufactures them. It takes the most advanced chip designs on Earth and turns them into physical silicon. Today, TSMC produces more than 90% of the world's most advanced chips below 7 nanometers. That means nearly every cutting-edge AI processor, including NVIDIA's, depends on TSMC's factories. In the AI economy, TSMC is not a competitor. It is a supplier with enormous bargaining power. When a single company controls the most advanced manufacturing capacity on the planet, pricing power shifts, you know, timelines shift, strategic dependence emerges. This is the essence of supplier power. Advanced chips are not scalable like software. They require massive capital, years of engineering, and continuous reinvestment. Each new generation costs more. Each node is harder to master. This creates extreme concentration, very high barriers to entry, and very few viable suppliers. In other words, AI is not a low-cost industry. It is a capital-intensive one, and this is where NVIDIA's position becomes particularly interesting. Because NVIDIA does not own the factories, but it operates at the center of this constrained system. Its strength comes from navigating scarcity, not escaping it. Understanding this balance between dependency and dominance is essential to understanding power in the AI industry. And this brings us to the next layer of analysis, how competitive forces interact inside this structure and how value is captured or lost across the ecosystem. Chapter 4. The Bargaining Power of Buyers NVIDIA's customers are among the most powerful institutions in the world. Hyperscalers, cloud platforms, governments, they buy at scale, they negotiate aggressively. But once infrastructure is built around CUDA, switching becomes extremely costly. Rewriting software, retraining teams, revalidating systems, that friction reduces buyer power, even for giants. This is why pricing power has remained strong, but there is a vulnerability, financial concentration. A significant share of revenue comes from a small number of customers. In some periods, two or three clients represent a large share of sales. Another signal appears on the balance sheet. Revenue is recognized before cash is collected. This doesn't imply weakness, but it increases sensitivity to investment cycles. When customers slow spending, the impact propagates quickly. Chapter 5. The Threat of Substitutes in early 2025, a Chinese model called DeepSeek caught global attention. It wasn't bigger, it was more efficient. Built under constraints, it optimized what it could control. Innovation doesn't always come from abundance. Sometimes it comes from limits. But even these systems still rely directly or indirectly on NVIDIA's ecosystem. This is not replacement. It's fragmentation. Different regions optimizing under different constraints. Insider signals and market behavior. There is one more signal worth watching. Not as a forecast, but as a behavioral indicator. Over recent months, several high-profile figures in the AI ecosystem have reduced exposure. At NVIDIA, executives have sold shares through pre-scheduled 10B51 plans. This is standard practice, liquidity, diversification, risk management. At the same time, some early AI investors and founders, including figures linked to companies like Palantir, have trimmed positions after exceptional performance. This doesn't mean the story is broken. It reflects something subtler. Risk management in a late cycle environment. When valuations expand, capital rebalances. Professionals don't read this as bearish. They read it as positioning. Markets rarely turn on one event. They turn when positioning, valuation, and expectations stretch together. Understanding that behavior is part of understanding risk. Chapter 6. Intensity of Rivalry When Porter talks about rivalry, he's not talking about headlines. He's talking about structural pressure. In semiconductors, rivalry is permanent. You compete on performance, on time to market, on yield, on supply, on ecosystem adoption. For NVIDIA, rivalry isn't one company. It's a moving battlefield on GPUs, AMD, in some segments, Intel. On accelerators, a deeper shift appears. Large customers build their own chips to reduce dependency and control costs. So rivalry becomes two things at once, product competition and vertical integration. This creates pressure, 
price pressure, margin pressure, platform pressure. When alternatives become good enough, the battle moves to ecosystems. That's why CUDA matters. It raises switching costs. It slows rivalry. Even as hardware competition increases, rivalry doesn't disappear. It evolves. Final takeaway. NVIDIA's advantage isn't speed. It's architecture. Not technological architecture. Competitive architecture. CUDA isn't just software. It's the glue that binds developers. Tools, models, and workflows. When training, inference, and software converge, exiting the ecosystem becomes costly. That's not accidental. That's design. AI is not a software story. It's an infrastructure story. A story of capital intensity, physical limits, and strategic control. Understanding that changes how you see the entire industry. And when you understand the structure, you understand the risk. And when you understand the risk, you understand the opportunity. Thank you for watching Money Veterans. Less noise, more strategy. And if you want to follow our work consistently, don't forget to activate the notification bell. See you in the next episode.